By the winter of 1862, the string of Union victories had ground to a halt. President Lincoln, looking for a victory to encourage support of the Emancipation Proclamation, ordered General William S. Rosecrans and his Army of the Cumberland in Nashville to move against Confederate General Braxton Bragg and his Army of Tennessee in Murfreesboro. On the night before the battle, December 30th, 1862, both armies were lined up ready for the battle which everyone knew would come the morning of December 31st. They were in camp and the various regimental bands scattered around the battlefield, both Union and Confederate, were playing songs. And then at some point during the night, we don't know which band and we don't know whether it was a Union band or a Confederate band began with the song Home Sweet Home. Of course, a very sentimental song, men being away from home and so forth, turn their thoughts towards home. And then another band picked it up. After a while, you had this effect of all over the battlefield, these individual regimental bands had joined together in this one playing of Home Sweet Home. And it has really endured as one of the great sort of human interest stories of the Battle of Stones River, that even though all these men knew the next day they would be locked in mortal combat, but just for those few minutes, mentally they were all attuned to thoughts that had very little to do with combat. They were thinking about home, thinking about their loved ones, probably thinking they'd rather be anywhere in the world but where they were right that minute. The rebels surprised the Union Army with an early morning attack. However, the terrain at Stones River would help Northern soldiers slow the Confederate advance in a rocky area veterans would later call the Slaughter Pen. This was an area of extremely intense fighting on the morning of the first day of the battle. In this particular area, though, the Union Army fought an extremely effective delaying action using these rocks that you see here, these limestone outcroppings for cover. They fought here as long as their ammunition held out to delay the Confederate advance. So terrain played a major role in the battle. It offered some cover, but it also impeded the movement of men, the movement of artillery. So it, it worked both ways, both for and against you. By the end of the day, the Confederate Army had run out of steam to a large degree. The Union Army was organized and did not allow the Confederates to break their line. On the second day of battle, despite initial Southern success, blistering fire from Union cannon ended the advance and any hope of a Confederate victory at Murfreesboro. Tennessee Civil War 150 is made possible in part by Tennessee Department of Education, Tennessee Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission, and Tennessee Civil War National Heritage Area.